Let's take you to Somalia tonight and one of the most significant events in Kenya's war to defeat the Al-Shabaab since the crossing of Kenya's defense forces into Somalia took place yesterday. And it didn't happen on the battlefield. The inauguration of the interim administration of the state of Juba's executive council finally happened, putting in place at least for the next two years a federal government in an area that even before the KDF had crossed into Somalia had been identified as a possible buffer zone between Somalia and Kenya. Now, does this mean that the end is finally in sight for Kenyan troops in Somalia? John Alanamu explains. All the hallmarks of the marking of a significant event in Kismayu, Somalia, were there. Song, dance and speeches. Today is a demonstration that you are not alone. The international community is here in impressive strength and we will stay here and we will help you to build a better future. The culmination of over a year of negotiations that led to the formation of the interim administration of Juba within the Federal Republic of Somalia. Why is this important to Kenya? Listen to this. We did not go there. They came here. We went there to help them bring order in their own nation. And I want to be categorically clear. We will stay there until they bring order in their nation. But even before Kenya's defense forces crossed into Somalia, Kenya had been part of a quiet strategy to form a buffer state in Somalia. Juba was that buffer state. The capture of Kismayu, Juba's capital, was very strategic for Kenya. Not only did it strangle the flow of resources to the Al-Shabaab from charcoal revenues, but as Horn of Africa specialist Abdi Wahad Sheikh Abdi Samad observes, it gave Kenya a platform from which to plan and execute further strategy. Kismayu is a gateway to Jubalan, a person who is able to control the city board and airport will have a considerable leverage over the control of the other areas. A key pillar in this strategy is one man. The current leader of the Juba administration, Ahmed Islam, more commonly known as Ahmed Madobe. <laughs> But behind the conciliatory comments is a man whose past does not inspire confidence that he can deliver on his words. He was once part of the Islamic Courts Union and later his bull Islam which was in league with the Al-Shabaab until falling out with them and founding the Raskamboni Brigade. He now has the support of IGAD and the European Union but not with everyone. He is a man who Kenya placed their faith in as they marched into Somalia. In July last year, the Somali government wrote a protest letter to the African Union asking Kenya to withdraw its peacekeeping troops from Somalia, claiming that Kenya was attempting to impose a leader of its choice in Juba against the will of the people. Kenya denied this. Many people of Somalia, they perceive Kenya as a Kubayan forces. The, 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 the longer they stay, the longer they see as Akubayan forces. But if they have a strategy to eradicate and crush the faceless militia within southern Somalia, that's good for the, for, for, for the Kenyans, mm -hmm. it's good for the region, and it's good for the, what you call the, the international community. Juba's administration's mandate runs for two years. That's two years with which it and Ahmed Madobe have to secure the gains made by Amisom in creating a secure state with no breathing space for the Al-Shabaab. If that is a success, then Kenya will finally have the buffer state that it has wanted for so long. But if it fails, then Kenya, as well as Amisom and Ahmed Madobe, will find that a completion date to the operations of Amisom in that part of the world may be further away than imagined. John Alanamu, KTN, Nairobi.